Hello and welcome to Miniature War Games review and issue April 2018, issue 420. And I got a few moans about this one. Right, okay, let's get stuck in, because later on in this video I do get stuck in. And um, I can tell you that because I had technical problems that record the first half twice. So there's an open article from Mr. Treadaway, who's been wargaming with the previous editor, Mr. Hyde. So there you go. Uh, rumours of friction, obviously, grossly exaggerated. It's kind of a bit wonky. Right, these are great starter sets for Romans and Samurai. And I believe... Uh, aren't they the big uh, plastic boxes in there? Oh no, it's 75 quid. There's a lot of everything in there anyway. Cracking looking figures. Great idea. In my predictions for the magazines, I thought there was going to be a lot more about this. Anyway, I'm going to whiz through because the second half's quite long. There's a new skirmish game, which has got a very original looking kind of uh, mechanic. Which, um, yeah, it's, which is interesting. Round of Fire, the universal system for skirmish battles. How ironic is that, considering we've got part three of four, this endless blinking universal skirmish system. So there we go, uh, this is called Lazy Forger Games. All right, uh, something about fences and tanks. This guy, fair play to you, sir. Self-published rules, he's got it done. He's got the rule book out, he's got a background history book. Doug Miller, I salute you. <laughs> something I wanted to do for years and never quite get this finished done bit. Another plug for the Tabletop Gaming Show. Uh, when's it again? End of the year, isn't it? September 29th, 30th. This, one of the funniest articles. Conrad Finch, as you know, I'm a Kinch, sorry, sorry, Mr. Kinch. As you know, I'm a big fan. They're amazing, amusing, quirky articles, and this is the quirkiest. It's got the Ruritania. I think it was Billy Liar originally, wasn't it? So it's made up games using beautiful toy soldiers, and these really are toy soldiers. And it's got a... <laughs> it says at the end of the article there, inspiration is Flashman and Prisoner of Zelda. Um, and it's scaling the walls, avoid the guards, get to the tower, break into Lady Sarah's chamber, and then a duel. And it's hilarious, because the games you play are not your standard wargaming games. <laughs> They're more, I would consider, to be after-dinner games, especially with a few drinks inside you might help. But there are orders of battle, <clears throat> if you want to do it properly. I think more the fun of throwing things at each other and whatever else you have to do in this. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Great lighting. Here we go. This endless... What's the stats for doing everything you can think of? I'll give you a percentage. Roll two dice. Have you rolled the percentage? Set of rules. Which goes on and on and on. Why isn't there some sort of PDF download on their website which you can actually use or something? What am I supposed to do with all this? I mean, it's, it's not exactly like reading, you know? I try to read everything for these reviews. But it's just... It's, it's, it's just tables and, and dull things. I mean, it's not fun to read, you know? It's um, strafing, strafing, strafing with automatic weapons. The aircraft fires at the ground, laying down fire and strip five inches wide along the length of the strip. Treat anything on that strip as being caught in light artillery fire. Rockets and similar unguided missiles. The aircraft fires at the ground, laying down fire and a strip ten inches wide along the length of the strip. Treat anything on that strip as being caught in medium artillery. Of course, the ground forces have a chance to shoot back. And then da 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 What am I supposed to do anyway? Am I supposed to rip these pages out and put them in a ring file so I can use it? Because it's about six, seven pages and issues. So it's like 20 odd pages altogether. So it's a photocopy it. What am I meant to do? I don't know. There we are, they two pound an issue. It's about right, I reckon. Uh, this Pyrenees 1813 campaign, which was good fun. And I like it, some very interesting scenarios, and I think they're worth looking at. But I think the whole premise of this is command decision. It takes you back to the old Charles S. Grant with the red v. blue and all that kind of stuff. It's got to be an informed decision, otherwise it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, there's a load of scenarios, which one do you want to play? Oh, I'll play that one. There's got to be a kind of risk and reward, you know? If you decide to face them and not march away, this... Uh, it's not quite working, but... Still very good articles, well written, and the scenarios are excellent, and there's more about this Pyrenees campaign that I didn't know about. And it's a very interesting battle, and there's always a battle. So someone's put a lot of work into this, and I don't want to seem too negative, because people do try with this magazine, and I think they care, 
it just needs some direction and please I'm worried I'm sort of worried I've got the second half about this magazine even surviving all right that's the stage I think we got to uh, we got chill corn advert okay right I'm gonna take 25 here yeah, we got the call to arms which is an interesting little scenario and it's for a game called Outremer which wasn't actually out when the magazine came out <laughs> you not just wait a month I mean or do a preview of the game and tell us about the game or something and then just something oh, I'm really having to go today because it's just please can you have some editing in this magazine because it's starting to annoy me there's a great example here right there's a little nice pictures by the way it looks like an interesting game it's uh, just to complete the review it looks like a sort of uh, gang building game like sort of Mordheim or um, Legend of the Old West but it's set in Crusader times it's a mix of Crusaders and Muslims and all kinds of things. So anyway, example here, right? A second model may be equipped with a torch for a cost of five livres. It's in brackets, an in-game currency, I assume. Ed, why are you assuming? Why are you making a question and a comment in the middle of an article? You're the editor. You ring him up. You put leaves here, mate. You haven't referred to what leaves are. The game's not out yet. No one knows what they are. Can you explain, please? Can you rewrite that bit? Also, a bit too much about the scenario, because shouldn't the game's not out? Can we reduce the words? That's called editing. You don't just slap the article in and then throw a few little funny comments in, you know? Uh, we got here, there's some nice pictures, the usual figures painted up in the usual ways, to be honest. And then there's a nice, <laughs> there's a table on how to use this as part of your uh, game, which isn't actually out yet. Ah, here we go. I'm gonna start again from Fantasy Facts, um, or Slammer's Facts, as most people know it. Uh, and we, although we've actually got some fantasy in here, which is great, we've got some elves. And I agree with, I assume, Mr. Treadaway, that they look more like the elves, I imagined, when I read Lord of the Rings. And those kind of full plate armour clunky things in the film. I love the film, by the way. It's just a different vision. And these look a lot like the old lizard men. Saurus, I guess you could use them for, or whatever, in your skirmish games. Obviously, not going to call them that. What do you got? He's got snake men. Not lizard men at all, are they? Steaks with arms. <laughs> and here's our usual dish of slammer's facts. And uh, I was going to save this for a separate video, but I am going to say something about this. Sci-fi, right? I don't know what it's like in your club, but all the people I know, 90% of the gaming is either going to be... Uh, is, well, it's basically 40k or 30k or the new versions or iterations of that. Never mentioned in here. Drop Zone Commander might get a passing, glancing mention in here. But that's mostly what people do when they do sci-fi, and there's a couple of other mainstream games. They're the ones I will see played. And that includes the club where this author goes to as well. They're the games that people play, you know? They sell tons of the stuff, right? There's some, a mammoth. Now, the argument I know has always been put forward. Games Workshop are really uh, tight on their copyrights, and they don't let you write anything. And I always assumed that was the reason why it's not in this kind of magazine. But then, uh, I got a copy of the Sister Magazine, which is the one running this show, Tabletop Gaming. I think there's a big house out at the back somewhere. Which, by the way, is a very good magazine, and I enjoyed reading it. Uh, and they, got, they had a whole thing there on 40K, and the new rules, and what they've changed, and the new figures. So it's not a taboo from that point of view. The other excuse, or reason given, is that they never send stuff. And basically, the argument is, with a magazine like this, is whatever we're sent, we review. Well, bully for you, it's not big enough to demand that kind of clout. What it means is the people you know and do business with or a game that you play a lot of, they'll send you the stuff because you're in contact with them and they know you. A lot of other companies will never do it. And as a result, all we get in here is a very distorted view of niche games appearing as large games when they're not and the large games not appearing at all and this becoming increasingly redundant. And I really worry for this magazine with this policy. And so I've been a bit nicey-nicey so far, but this is really starting to annoy me. I, I don't advertise anymore. And the ad rates have tripled. Look, just jumping around slightly, and a bit of a rant now. The small ad section. Um, well, this is tabletop gaming, if you're looking for it. There's the house ad, very nice. Very professional magazine, expensive for advertising, there you go. This is now the small ads. It's, it's not even a page. Well, I suppose it's just it's a page with a house ad in it. OK. Um, the other worry, thing I've been asking now for a couple of months for um, what's the latest circulation figures or subscription numbers or something like that, and their salespeople don't seem able to tell you. 
which I think is a bad sign, and I know a few people who stopped subscribing. There is an offer in here where you can get six issues for 12 quid. About two pound an issue, I think is about right. I don't think this can justify four pound odd when War Games Illustrated is also four pounds odd. Maybe about 30p difference in the price, something like that. Uh, so anyway, here we go. A little bit of fantasy on there. I'm gonna skip through because to be honest, oh, this, I have to, this one see more of this kind. This is brilliant. These are fantastic, right? Unfortunately, most of them are not yet out. They're kind of at their digital rendering stage. When I went to their website, I love the look of them, Atlantis. Not cheap, but there you go. Right, now this is a star article, and every time I want to give up with this magazine, something like this happens. As Pete, wasn't it, wrote this? Yeah, Pete Merritt, another South London warlord, from a demo game they did. I think it was the last time I worked on Salute. Oh, no, it was back in 2013. I thought it was older than that. Oh, there we go, I remember it, fantastic. Great big foot-high figures. I mean, just awesome. And this article is fantastic. It's got how the figures are built, how they source them, the scratch building, the rules. And I'm gonna say the rules, this is what I'm on about, rules appearing in a magazine. Rather than that 20-odd page ramble, whatever the 20th century skirmishing, everything I can think of, or what's the tripping over a bucket stat, this is a complete game system here. It's, it's just there. You can play it, right? That's it. There's your setup. There's the game. There's my ideas. And these guys, this got play tested to death because they ran it at shows and people came up and played the game all day long at show after show after show. This works, all right? They know what your odds on getting out. If you want to make it a little bit easier, you move the guys forward a bit or backward a bit. And you've got to get the Golden Fleece. And it's all based on them. Um, I always get his name wrong. Anyway, the special effects film from the 60s. I went to see this for a 12th, 13th birthday, so you can age me from that probably. Uh, Jason the Argonauts was fantastic. I loved it. And uh, we don't really watch TV in our house, but we do have this as a download on YouTube. <laughs> look at it, look at this. How glorious is that? And then a picture sneaked in, which I recognise from good old Kevin Dallimore's painting guidebook. Right, I'm starting to get wet now. Our next door wants to go on with this gardening noise, so I'm going to speed this up. But this is worth it on its own, and they could sell that as a little magazine. Here's another totally indulgent thing. It goes on and on and on. I mean, if you really want detail on this period, I think you should buy a book. It's quite good reading. I was interested for a while, but I'm starting to wane now. And the pictures, most of them are lifted from uh, Kevin Dallimore's painting guide. So if he gets uh, all uh, copyright, I know he's best friends with the editor, so maybe they work something out. But it's, um, <laughs> spot the old picture. Anyway, there we go. Recce, my usual complaint. These aren't really wargaming books. If you want to put a page on historical books that wargamers might like, fine. But it does say, books for wargamers. Mm, that's well, they can let them off, I suppose. This looks quite good. I have to paint the field guard. There's just been lots of them around. Uh, tanks, 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 tanks. Uh, some Napoleonic memoirs, which I think, oh, I, I looked at, I think I've read those, I'm sure I've read some of those before. There's one here, it's definitely a reissue. This Caracula, the, the reviews weren't in the book, I think. This guy's a real go at him. Who's done the review? William Dupret. He's launched into that book. Good on you, mate. Worth uh, reading that review. Machine guns, machine guns and guns and, you know, great. And this, this... British Artillery in World War II, right? That gets the special award. Why? The war game about how to load an artillery piece. It just, ugh. This looks quite good, Waterloo Road to Retreat. And judging by the style, I think it's the same publishing and everything as um, Chris, uh, not Chris, Glover. Glover, uh, Gareth Glover's books. Who's a Welsh author, written a very interesting book on Waterloo. And there you go. Hey, just about finished. Small ads, dusty tracks, usual good writing from Dan Sutherland. Messed up with the usual interjections from the editor, which he can't write down. I thought maybe the message he got through, <laughs> but they started to appear again. Right, I'll give you an example. My roads are slipping. So he's talking about the fact he's made grippy roads that don't slide around the table, all right? And it's funny what she's written, and it's good, but it gets, anyway. My roads are slipping, he told me. I was tempted to suggest he scattered salt over them. Instead, I bit my tongue. Brackets. I too was about to mention something about the council gritter. 
Well, she's done it. It's, it's not having a chat on the phone. This is an article. You can't just throw things in. There we are. No comments about women drivers and where those tracks are all over the place. <laughs> not this modern PC world of ours. And there's a show guy, which is a very personal account. And what I really want to see is a list of everything that was there and all that kind of thing. A little bit more objective rather than these are the games I liked. And I saw a few. I would have written about this one, but I didn't know what it was. Not really investigative journalism. So there we are, there's me having a bit of a rant. There's some beautiful pictures there from Vat... Oh, God. Vatnatak. Say I'm more Celtic than Viking. I struggle with these words. But I can say Tlan Vair Pukwinge Kugeru Kundrop Klatsidu Kukuk. You know what I mean? It's kind of a, it's a cultural thing, isn't it? And like I said, there's a small number of small ads at the back. And what is this? Oh, tabletop gaming house ad. Another house ad. I'm talking about the future of this magazine. If you take out all the house ads, there's very few display adverts left in it. Very few. And with subscriber base dropping, I am seriously worried. I'm going to do a special video. I reckon I'd be very surprised. Not surprised. That's the wrong word. It wouldn't be a total shock if this magazine disappeared in the next six months. I've worked in publishing. I know how this works. I can't see where the money is in this magazine. There's not enough display advertising. They're killing the, this. They've got no circulation figures or subscription figures even. The subs figures are easy. You know exactly how many people are subscribing. They're hiding these figures. They do have them. So in all, I'm very worried. It's a magazine I've had since issue one. I've advertised it. I've bought it. I've, I've written articles for it, so I have no real uh, axe to grind against it. I'm a big fan. People have described, desire, suggested I go over to WSS, War Games, Soldiers and Strategy, which I've looked at a couple of times, I enjoy it. Um, I have a lot of loyalty to this. And I know the people working on it, so I feel a bit bad. But there we are. Gotta be honest, and that's how I feel. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please leave your comments and let me know, are you subscribing? Are you resubscribing? And can you come around and shut my children up for mommy? <laughs> All right, cheers then. Uh, till the next time, keep rolling.